Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we had some insight into what the big boys or the smart money traders are doing? You know, if we could kind of like just be lurking outside their offices or outside their 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 parties that they're obviously having, you know, laughing about how much money they've made off of us because <laughs> it sure feels that way sometimes, doesn't it? So they've got this secret trading world, and and it'd be nice if we had some sort of a window into that world, so we could kind of figure out how we could also profit from what they're doing in the markets. And and so, you know, you got to figure there's got to be a way. But first, um, let's uh, talk about me just a little bit. I was a re remodeling contractor for over 20 years. I was a struggling futures trader for about seven years. And then I, I finally... Uh, figured out this pullback trading thing. And so I've been a professional trader since 2008, uh, a trading educator, a indicator developer, and a, and a pullback uh, system developer. And that's what we do. That's, that's what we trade pullbacks. That's our style of trading. And today I'm going to show you what the smart money is doing and how to capitalize on it. All right. So smart money, who's the smart money? Smart money is the insiders and better informed speculators typically that invest more. And smart money can sometimes be spotted by greater than usual volume, especially when little or no public data exists to justify it. And you've seen this happen on charts, and I'm going to show it to you, okay? Knowing who the smart money is and when and where they're investing can be of great benefit to retail uh, investors who want to ride the smart money's coattails, okay? Smart money. We, we often talk about the HFTs or the high-frequency traders, the market makers, the institutional funds, things like that. Those are the guys that have an, a lot of money and they have the ability to trade in a way that we don't. And we'll talk about that in a minute also, okay? So that's when I'm talking about smart money. That's what, what I'm talking about. And so how do they do what they do? They, We all know that the markets are being manipulated, right? And if they're purposely manipulating the markets, don't you have to ask yourself, well, why, do they, why are they doing that, right? Could it be because every time they do it, we all act exactly the same way every single time. And that makes us predictable, right? As predictable as the sun coming up tomorrow, right? So shouldn't we be very interested in what is actually happening so we can also have an edge against the other retail traders? But where do we trade? I mean, when when would that information come in handy for us? So if we try to trade against the smart money, you know, that's like stand, trying to stand in front of a locomotive. Or if we try to trade uh, with them, well, that's like trying to juggle knives, you know, or catch a falling knife. So what does that leave? We, we got to trade after them. So we need to watch what's going on. We need to wait for them to do what they're what they're going to do, and we need to know. We need to see the signs that they're about to do it. Okay. So trading after they do their manipulations and react opposite from the rest of the retail traders out there, that's our edge. Okay. How do how do the, all of the other retail traders act? The ones that we need to be trading opposite them. The ones that are reacting to the to the uh, manipulations are typically caught off guard every single time it happens, because unfortunately we're human, 
And they have machines and algorithms and big uh, bank accounts that they have at their disposal that we don't have. We just have us. So if you're in a trade and and then you see a manipulation happen, typically we're going to panic as we watch price heading quickly towards our stop, right? Or if we're not in a trade, we panic, you know, we get FOMO and we don't want to miss out on the big move. So then we try to jump into the big move, right? We're predictable. You may say, well, I don't do that. But you either have, you will, or everybody around you does. Because most retail traders will act predictably. Okay, And that's where these guys have an edge against us. So the, the problem is, is you're in this trade and you're like, oh, no. Uh, you start freaking out. What do I do? Should I get out? Should I jump in? Should I double up? Uh, you know, I could have had a big profit, but I'm losing money now. Do I wait? Do I cut my losses? What do I do? This causes an awful lot of stress. So when I created this pullback system, I was struggling, and stress was a killer for me. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way that I could trade without having all this stress? So I'll show you how I went about doing that and what we came up with. All right? So we're here talking about smart money, right? You notice that in the definition for smart money, it said smart money can sometimes be spotted by greater than usual volume especially when little or no public data exists to justify it. So not only do we trade pullbacks, but we have a very specific mission. We have a sweet spot for pullback trades. And I'll show you how we track volume in our trade room to help qualify our most prolific trade setup. We call it the, the rock star and naked rock stars. Basically, uh, two uh, trade setups that are almost identical with minor differences. So let me show you what the difference is real quick, and then we're going to start talking about the big boy moves. All right, so here's a video of just any chart, just a regular chart, just, you know, this could, could have been yesterday or 10 years ago. It doesn't matter. It, but here's a video of a chart with no indicators on it and nothing that you can really sink your teeth into as far as trying to figure out what's likely to happen next. And now we're going to add indicators, okay? So you can watch this and see, notice the bars are changing colors. That's one of our indicators. Notice this pink outline. That's another indicator. Notice this arrow. This is called our speed tick. I'm going to talk about that in a little while. Notice that now the bar is getting even lighter in color. Notice this dot. This is our volume spread analysis indicator. This is called our pullback alert. Okay. That has determined, this dot has determined that this is a high churn rate bar and it's most likely a climax bar, okay? When I say churn rate, I'll show you what that means in a few minutes. This, notice when it notice when it showed up. The instant that it picked up the type of volume that is important to us, it prints that. If it prints above this candlestick, that means we anticipate price to drop. If it's below the candlestick, we anticipate price to go up, all right? And then on the open of the next bar, we get our rock star. This is our rock star, our naked rock star trade set up, and this is typically what it looks like, all right? So I just wanted you to see that so you can kind of understand the direction I'm headed with what we're going to be talking about next. Okay, so you're here to learn about smart money and, and how they use volume. Um, 
Volume spread analysis is an ideal way to identify and understand when price is about to do something specific. For example, change directions, which is what we want to know. We don't want to know when price is going to continue on. There's not enough information in the market to tell us that a continuation of this trend is likely. Okay. But we do have information that tells us, using volume spread analysis, that tells us that this burst, this short term trend, is about to stop and change directions, at least in the short term. Okay. Not as far as the, the longer term trend, it may continue on for who knows how long. But every trend has a series of pullbacks right? Every trend has a series of pullbacks. And those pullbacks are regular and cyclical, okay? So that makes them predictable. And let's see how, that, how this is happening and why, okay? So we're going to be looking at um, we're, the chart, and we're going to be looking for what volume spread analysis measures is the weakness and strengths of individual bars, okay, not the market as a whole, but of what just happened. Because the, the best way to know what's about to happen is by what just happened, okay? So in addition to uh, looking at the strengths and weaknesses of indiv individual bars, we want to look at background strength and weaknesses. So we're always looking for weakness in an uptrend and strength in a downtrend. But let's lay some foundations uh, before building the blocks of the smart money and, and volume. First thing is, of course, to understand a little bit more about the working of smart money as they manipulate the supply and demand and thus price, okay? So we have the phases of smart money manipulation, okay? It's all done in phases. And, and at any point in time, go pull up a trading chart typically one that's a time-based chart because that's what the big boys use is time. Um, so we're going to look at the phases of smart money manipulations. First phase is accumulation. Second phase is markup. Third phase is distribution. And then the final phase is the markdown. Okay. Now, Watching the smart money and volume, we're not as interested in the overall volume quantity as, as we are the type of volume that's uh, flowing through the instrument during the current bar. A lot of you use volume indicators just to see how much volume is, is in a bar. And I guess to some point, degree that might have some value, but I I struggled with volume because just having a lot of volume didn't necessarily tell me what direction price was going to go, okay? It, it does offer you some information, but it wasn't real good decision-making information. A lot of people come and they look at our, our charts in the trade room and they're like, where's the volume? Everybody you know, else watches volume. Why aren't you watching volume? We do. We just do it a different way. We only want to look at specific types of volume, okay? So the accumulation phase. This is when the smart money is acquiring an instrument or an asset, um, and they're going to go about it pretty slow and stealthy, okay? For you and me, we're sitting there, and we're waiting for a trade setup to show up, and we're trying not to fall asleep, and things are boring because price is just kind of channeling along. It usually, we, we, we'll call this congestion, where price is just going up and down, up and down in a, in a pretty tight range. The volume is, isn't real high. And, you know, it, and like I said, we're trading in a range, right? So it's going to look something like this, okay? And whenever we see this, I don't care what kind of trading system you have. You don't trade this. Okay? You don't you don't want to be involved in this type of trading. So it's, this is the process. 
through which the smart money is acquiring a large quantity of the asset at the lowest possible price. And, and it, it's subtle, um, but very sophisticated and sly. It's a, a process of cornering a huge quantity of the available um, assets that are out there. That And, and it's important that they do this uh, it, because it makes the following phases worth doing, worthwhile. It's all part of a process, okay? So once a large quantity has been absorbed, the number of floating assets are reduced and the demand then increases, okay? So notice the trades are taking place in this tight range. Volume is low um, and it can be characterized. You're going to see pretty small bars uh, during this period. A particular period of time. Open and close are going to be very close to each other. All right. Now, the markup phase. Characteristics of the markup. So you're going to see a series of, of higher lows and higher highs. Price starts rising, but not necessarily on higher volume. They, the idea is to keep the volume still relatively low. Price rises in stages with a series of retracements or pullbacks, and it's going to look just like this, and you see this all the time. It's going to break out of that the accumulation phase and then it's going to take off at least a little bit when the uh, the uh, the demand outpaces the supply or or the demand is less than the supply the price is going to go up okay now very short and this is kind of an aside and, and something we're going to talk about more this Saturday. We have an event this Saturday and I'll put that up before you hear in a few minutes. But um, there's a group of traders called momentum traders. And that what they like to do is they like to buy high, sell higher. Okay. You all, you always hear buy low, sell high. Well, the momentum traders are going to buy high, but then they're going to push it up and sell it higher. So this you, you'll see momentum traders jumping in here to buy. They'll sell right here and then wait for the pullback to happen after that. Okay, so the momentum traders that uh, strictly trade momentum, they're in and out in a hurry and they add to this. They identified this also and figured out, hey, there's an opportunity. So we take the back side of that opportunity. They take the front side of the opportunity, okay? So we'll talk about this more when we talk about the speed tick, which is an indicator that we use to, to kind of give us a heads up that something's happening. All right, so we have a markup. Then we can have some more accumulation. And what happens here, I want to show you this. What happens here is price gets pushed up, and then they'll stop. And they'll wait and see if, and of course, these are computers that are doing all this. This is not people. This is computers. But they're going to wait and see, did price hold up at this higher level? They're, they're expecting after this strong push and this climax, did price hold or did it continue to drop? So if it held, then they're like, okay, well, let's let's give this another shot. Let's do it again, and let's see if price holds up in here, okay? So that's what's happening here during these accumulation and markup phases. Distribution. Now, a lot of people think the big climax bars are where the, they're making all their money. They're not. They make all their money during the distribution phase. And they're going to make it just look, look just like accumulation. Okay. No big panic, no quick moves, no big moves. Um, it's the same 
it looks exactly the same to us. So we don't really want to be trading during this either. But the smart money is making their profits here. They're going to distribute it very slowly. They, they want price. They don't want to do high volume because they know everybody's watching volume, right? So to us, again, nothing's happening. We think there's no interest. We're falling asleep. There's low volume. We're just waiting for something to happen. Well, something's happening, but it's not, it's not for us. Okay, so we've got the low volume, but it finishes again with this up thrust bar. Of course, it this goes both ways. I'm just showing you price going up, but they do it going down as well. Just the opposite of everything. So we finish with these big up thrust bars. Okay, so it looks like this. This is where they're making their profits. However, now I told you that they're, they've cornered a large share of the market of the, the available assets. And they've done this through accumulation. Now they're distributing. This is where they're making as much money as they need to make on this particular uh, manipulation. And then because they are still the, the primary holders of this instrument, they're able to, again, run it up. And again, one final manipulation. This is our speed tick right here. This is very important to us. This run up right here tells us something's about to happen. And we'll talk about this in a minute. But on these bars, these up thrust bars, that's where we get our speed tick that tells us that this bar is most likely being manipulated and the orders that are being processed through the exchange are going so much faster than us little retail traders are able to do it. That means it must be the big boys, the smart money. That's the big footprint in the sand that that we have that that's how we know that's our window looking in on what the big boys are doing okay so distribution is where they're making all their money but then they have one final manipulation so they can then go through the final phase and mark it down again and do it all over again so they've got i said they've got they're the main asset holder, right? They, they've still got most of the assets. And they dump those overwhelming demand, okay? So when supply rushes in and overwhelm demand, what happens? Price starts dropping. And it starts dropping faster than the rest of us can get out of that trade. All right? And what they do, and it'll drop just like this, and they'll do it in reverse, and then they'll do it again. And if you don't know, if you don't, if you think this is something that I just drew up, go pull up a chart, a time-based chart, and look at it. And you can see this exact pattern, although this one is kind of an ideal pattern to show you. You'll see it over and over and over again, okay? So these up thrusts are usually followed by a pullback, which is what we trade. It's our edge that we exploit every day. Just by having an up thrust bar doesn't mean it's going to pull back for sure. We want more information, but that's really good information to have to know that it's highly likely that that is that bar has been manipulated, okay? So what else can we look at inside the bar to increase the chances of price pulling back? Okay, I just mentioned it. You see it there, the speed tick. That's processed order flow, okay? Now we're going to get into that in just a minute. But we want to talk about volume spread analysis. So. Uh, VSA is a quantitative study of price action using three components to determine the balance of supply and demand. Uh, 
just like it sounds, Kumar, during accumulation, they're acquiring assets. They're buying as many of this instrument as they can very quietly. During distribution, they're selling them back for a profit. Okay? So, number one, the volume spread analysis we're looking at, of course, volume, of course, spread, and the close of price, okay? So that's what we're looking at. So it's going to look something like this, you know, when you see the high-low uh, of a bar and the close. Then we're going to get a feel for what type of volume was coming into the bar, okay? And that's very important, the type of volume. So let me show you what I mean by the type of volume. So if you're looking at a chart and you've got two bars, if you're just looking at a static chart and you weren't watching while these bars were being built with data coming in, but you're just scrolling and they all look the same to you, right? That It looks like exactly the same bar. But in fact, these two bars are very different. So let's look how this first bar was built, okay? So price is coming in. You know, it opens, it drops a bit. Then it goes up. The ticks are coming in, hits the high and drops, and goes back to the close of the bar, okay? Nothing really special going on there. Nothing that gives us any indication of something specific is about to happen. Let's look at the second bar, how the ticks are coming in. So the price starts coming in and the, we get some buying and selling and mostly selling. And then, oh, the buyers really rush in and they're, you know, it's going not, going gangbusters until they buy right into the sellers that are sitting there waiting. And, price, and then they keep pushing and, and the sellers are up there and they're selling. And we get this churning activity. Remember I said we're looking for a specific type of volume. And we get this churning activity where the in, in this circumstance, the buyers, they're all happy and buying away like crazy, although they're getting kind of tired because they, they push price up pretty high. But they're still trying, and the sellers are just sitting there, not exhausted. And they're waiting for the buyers to get there. And then the sellers start selling. Bam, 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 bam. And there's that churning activity. The, the last of the buyers are still trying to come in and buy and run it up. The sellers, they're like determined it's going to go down. And there's some fighting going on. So there's this churn bar here. Very important to us. Because it's part of our trade setups. We know that when we get one of these dots, we have three different dots, and what each of them means isn't really important at, at this point. It's just a different type of volume inside the bar that gives us some sort of indication that price is likely to change directions. So this is a uh, this setup is of a high probability sell setup, okay? And we're using volume spread analysis to tell us that the type of volume in that bar, notice the size of the bar relative to the previous bars, the type of volume in that bar is conducive to price changing directions. So this is what the pullback alert looks like on a live, on a live uh, chart. I get it to print. Oh, so you'll notice, let me, let me back this up. So we have different conditions. I'm just going to let this play. We have different conditions that this is reporting. This is one of those conditions. We'll talk about this more on Saturday. So as as price is just, uh, 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 the ticks are coming in and price is going up, we're, we're, right now we have one particular type of volume coming in. Now we have another type of volume coming in. and this bar has been identified as a climax bar. Okay, so that's why it has this different color dot with a different number in it. And it happened, we're reading every single tick 
that comes into the bar to tell us exactly what type of volume we're seeing and what we can anticipate is about to happen right now. Okay, so it happens in real time, and the instant the condition exists, it prints on the chart. Okay? Now, as, so I mentioned we trade pullbacks, right? And we're all about increasing our odds. Okay? So when you look at a chart, this is and this is kind of the exercise I went through when I came up with this, is I started looking at charts because I I was a miserable failed trader for seven years, and I failed at everything that I tried. So uh, one day I I realized that I was no more likely to win the next trade as I was the very first day I tried I started. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to, I'm making a very long story short, but I'm just going to quit and I'm going to do something that has made me successful in all other areas of my life. I had a construction business and hot tub companies and so, and those all went very well. But as a contractor, my, my primary skill as a contractor, I was a remodeling contractor was problem solving. Well, I never looked at this as a problem that needed to be solved. I always looked at outwardly, you know, on YouTube and trading forums and, you know, videos and all kinds of, I knew the answer was out there, so why did I have to figure it out? But for seven years, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I finally decided, you know, what if a customer came to me and said, Tony, I need you to figure this out for me. I would figure out a way to do it. And so that's how I started approaching this. So I thought, well, first I need to find an edge. And, and so the most obvious thing was I see these big bars and then I see price change direction. Hmm. Maybe there's something there. And that's where I started analyzing this. So I want to start increasing our odds. So Rather than just looking for the big boys and seeing what they're doing, and I tell you what, that was a that was an enlightening thing when we came up with that, which I'm still going to get to. I figured, you know what? There's an awful lot of stuff out there. Let's look inside of every bar, and and let's see what else is going on that could be indicating that price is about to change direction. Now, BSA analyzes volume and price action relative to the preceding bars on a chart. And they do this to identify accumulation and distribution phases, which suggests future direction of price. Also a quantitative study of price action and those three components uh, that we talked about to determine the balance of supply and demand right? As well as the probable near-term direction of the market. And that's what we're interested in, near-term. Okay, the best way to know what's going to happen right now is, what's, is by reading what's happening right now. Okay? Not an hour from now, but right now. So the components um, are the amount of volume affecting the price and the price spread or range of the price. Not the bid ask spread, but the uh, the, the regular spread the, the from high to low, okay? And where price closes, okay? So I mentioned order flow analysis and speed tick, okay? So I... I identified that there was something happening just before price would stop and change directions. If you looked at this prior to me telling you that, you probably wouldn't see any solid trading opportunities here. Okay, are they they're not going to be immediately obvious to you. 
So I'm going to I'm going to throw an indicator on there for you and see if now you can tell me if I add this histogram do you see it? Are you still not sure? Okay, so what if I added our speed tick? Our speed tick is actually based on this histogram. And this tells us when we have a spike of speed. Think of this as a speedometer, okay? So we're not looking at the number of orders being processed, okay? We're not looking at the volume. What we're looking at, and, I, and I'm saying processed, that means that I've actually gone through the exchange. Not that are sitting and waiting, okay? Not, not the level two stuff. I mean, not the uh, book stuff, but the uh, time and sales stuff, right? The stuff that goes, that's actually going through the market. When the rate is higher than is likely us little retail traders can do it, then we probably have a manipulation. So I had a, a programmer do this for me. And I immediately put it on a chart. And I noticed that every time I had one of these bars that exceeded one of these levels, price turned even if just a little bit, okay? It doesn't have to turn a lot. All you have to do is have an edge, okay? So on the next bar, after the bar with this arrow on it, we're looking for price to change directions. And once, uh, and again, you can still look at this and go, well, I don't see a huge opportunity here. Well, let me show you what I saw. On the bar after each one of these, I had a 26 tick pullback, a 10 tick pullback, a 15 tick pullback, 22, 16. If you look at static charts, you'll never see this. You've got to study dynamic charts. If you look at um, if you if you try to do a uh, 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 a strategy with this, you'll miss it. You won't see it because all the strategy is going to tell you when you do back testing is a bunch of numbers. You have to witness this, and you'll see it, and it is totally tradable. But these pullbacks give us an edge, and the, the beauty is. You probably don't trade them now, and neither do most people, because they're not immediately obvious, which makes it great for us, right? So, again, this is like that window. This is that window into what the big boys are doing, right? Uh, it all depends, Kumar. It depends on from where you're pulling it back. Now they're they're all measured. All right. So today we talked about the volume analysis and order flow. On Saturday, we're going to talk about the other indicators that we use. For what for what is the most simple trade that we believe there is in trading. And it's so predictable. I'm gonna hold on a second. Uh-oh, where'd my I'm gonna put in a link to that if I can get it to come up. There it is. All right, so there's a link to register for that event for Saturday. It's uh, at 11.30 a.m. 
Eastern time on Saturday. So you have to register because it won't, the registration for this event won't carry over for that event. So you'll have to, uh, you'll have to register for that event. And we're, we're going to show you the, the actual trade setups and we're going to go through the entire process of qualifying a trade, how you qualify it, and when to enter and where to exit. And all of that. So we're going to talk about a very simple trade using the confluence of these two items that we showed you today and a few more that we'll show you on Saturday. I also want to give you guys a chance to uh, come hang out with us in the trade room. And I had this. Hold on a second. Let me get you that one. All right, there's a sign up to come uh, to our trade room next week. We're open from 9 a.m. until noon Eastern time. And you can get a real feel for what we're actually doing. Everything I showed you here and everything I'm going to show you on Saturday, you'll see that exact thing in the trade room. All right, and for coming today, I appreciate everybody coming. And we're going to offer you a 20% a discount on any of our packages. You can go to our shop and check those out. All right. Well, I'm going to turn this back over to Chris. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and we hope to see you all very soon.